We're in a sermon series called I See You. You. What does God see when he looks at me? Does he see us the same way we see one another? Kara Williams said, The God who created the universe and sustains it by his mighty hand stoops down to see you and meet you in your challenging human circumstances. He loves you and longs to offer you the gift of himself. Let's look at how God sees and cares for us and learn how we are called to see ourselves as we see and care for others. As we begin our worship service today, I invite you to think of someone who would benefit from this time together. Send them the link, upc.org slash watch live. Thanks for joining us today. Let's worship the Lord together. Good morning and welcome to UPC. We're going to sing a few upbeat songs for you in the way of worship this morning. Hopefully we can all join together and uh, praise the Lord. If you're able, please stand and come along with us. be singing a few kids songs but this is such an old kids song that some of you adults were kids when you learned it so go ahead and get the kid out okay I've got a friend ain't nobody like him I've got a friend ain't nobody like Nobody like him, Jesus, he's my friend. I've got a friend, ain't nobody like him. I've got a friend, ain't nobody like him. I've got a friend, ain't nobody like him, Jesus, he's my friend. Oh, ain't nobody, tell me like Jesus. 
Sit down for this one. Another song for kids, but it's for us too. There's nothing you can do to keep God from loving you. Nothing you can do or say will change his love in any way. A lot of folks have tried, but he came to earth and died. Then he rose to make his love complete, send our sin down to defeat. He's such a friend, I must repeat, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to keep God from loving you. Nothing you can do or say will change his love in any way. A lot of folks have tried, but he came to earth and died. And he rose to make his love complete. Send our sin down to defeat. He's such a friend, I must repeat. There's nothing you can do. Good morning, everyone. Join me for our prayer of confession this morning. Merciful God, we confess to you now that we have sinned. We confess the sins that no one knows and the sins that everyone knows. We confess the sins that are a burden to us and the sins that do not bother us because we have grown used to them. We confess our sins as a church. We have not loved one another as Christ loved us. We have not forgiven one another as we have been forgiven. We have not given ourselves in love and service for the world as Christ gave himself for us. Father, forgive us. Send the Holy Spirit to us that he may give us power to live as by your mercy you have called us to live. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now hear this assurance of pardon from Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Even as far as deep in the diamond mine, as way down deep in the diamond mine, there's a rock that's just sitting in the dark. But when God's light shines on our hearts, that little rock can really shine. We're going to hear about Elijah where God used the diamond in his heart to do wonderful things. 
So let's sing about the, all the diamonds that we have. Somewhere down deep diamonds lie Waiting for the miner's light Then the facets show their spark Spreading light and shred There's a diamond deep in me that nobody else can see, and it's waiting for the one who put it there. When the light of life appears in the darkness of my fears, it's reflected in my life and love and Somewhere down deep diamonds lie Waiting for the miner's light Then the facets show their spark Spreading light and shred there's a diamond deep in me that nobody else can see and it's waiting for the one who put it there when the light of life appears in the darkness of our fears it's reflected in my life and love and Somewhere down deep diamonds lie. Well, we just had a week of day camp with kids. We, it was small but mighty, and our theme was carry the torch, having to do with the Olympics. So, uh, while we sing this song, which was the theme of our week together, uh, if you could pretend like you have a torch in your hand. And you can hold it up. And you can hold it out to the ne person next to you. You can bang the microphone with it. And remember that it goes before us, but we are also guiding those behind us, and we are also in fellowship with those here today. So, it goes like this. Carry the torch. Oh, 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 carry the torch and let it show. Carry the torch so all will know we carry the torch. Carry the torch. Oh, 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 carry the torch and let it show. Carry the torch so all will know we carry the torch. Here's, here's where it brings out. It's a light that goes before us. It's a guide to those behind. It glows in those. So let us run with perseverance, that race marked out for us. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus as our guide, as we carry the torch. Oh, 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 carry the torch and let it show. Carry the torch so all will know we carry the torch. Carry the torch. As we 
carry the torch. Oh, 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 carry the torch and let it show. Carry the torch, so I will know we carry the torch. Carry the torch. Oh, 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 carry the torch and let it show. Carry the torch, so I will know we carry the torch. We carry the torch. We carry the torch. One more time. We carry the torch. Nice to see all those torches out there. Let them burn. Hello, UPC kids. I'm TG, and I'm so glad that you are here with me today. Today, I want to talk to you about being brave. And when I think about bravery, I think about a young woman by the name of Mulala. Mulala is from Pakistan. And when she was just a little girl, a group took over her town. And that group said that girls could no longer go to school. Well, Mulala did not think that that was right. And she began to speak out on girls' right to learn. Well, that group that took over her town was not happy, and they made life hard for Mulala and her family, so much so that they had to eventually relocate to another country. Today, Mulala still speaks out about every little girl's right to learn. She was even the youngest person to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Today, I want to talk to you about a story in the Bible about another incredibly brave young woman by the name of Esther. Esther was a Jewish queen married to a Persian king. Haman, the king's chief advisor, was offended by Mordecai, who was Esther's cousin and guardian. And Haman devises a plan and gets the king's permission to kill all of the Jews in the kingdom. Mordecai came and talked to Esther and said, you must talk to the king to save our people. This required some bravery on Esther's part because no one could enter the king's presence without his permission. Esther prayed and asked God to save her people, and she decided to go and talk to the king, and God saved her and her people. Esther was brave, just like Jesus was brave when he died on the cross to save us from our sins so that we could live with him forever. At some point in time, all of us are called to be brave. Fear and hard decisions are a part of life. What do you fear? Maybe it's making a new friend, trying a new sport or hobby, or standing up for what you think is right. You can do it. You are brave. Why? Because Jesus makes you brave. You can pray and ask him to be with you and he'll be right there to help you be brave, just as God helped Esther to be brave. To find out more about this story, go to upc.org slash kids. Now, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we are never alone, that he's right here with us to make us brave. Even when we are so scared to do something or to speak out, we know we have the assurance of Jesus's presence with us. We ask you to be with us each and every day to make those tough decisions. This we ask in Jesus's name, amen. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time. Well, you PC kids, does she look a little familiar, that person on the screen? <laughs> to all of our UPC kids up in the balcony, hello, it's time for you to go to worship. If you registered and you have a name tag, go ahead and meet your teachers back there in the back. 
And parents, if you're interested in registering your children two years to the fifth grade, just go to upc.org slash kids. Thank you, everybody. All right, now it's that time in our worship service for our tithes and offerings. We want to continue in our giving to the church. We want to thank you so much for your consistency. And this week, we would like to highlight our young adults here, our recent college graduates and young professionals. That ministry is growing by leaps and bounds under the leadership of Polly and Miko. They are meeting regularly, uh, social Socializing, coming to worship together, and actually having Bible study. So it's an amazing work that started over 100 years ago in this community, and we want to continue doing that. And your shared giving does that here. So you want to know how to give? If you're there at home, you can just press that button right on the screen. You can also go to upc.org slash give. And those of you here in the sanctuary, there's a box out in the narthex. Let us pray over our tithes and offerings this morning. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, the Lord takes us to the mountaintop many times. Sometimes it's a very high mountaintop, and then on the other side is a very low valley. But he's with us on the mountaintop and in the valley. And we're going to sing a song about a man who felt that. Well, God had taken on the prophets of Baal. God had won, and Baal had failed, and Elijah stood in victory alone. Well, the test was passed, but quick as a flash, he picked up his ropes and he began to dash, and he ran, and he ran, and he ran on down the road. Over the hills and down the dale, he kept on running till he started to fail, and then he crawled away and hid inside some cave. He said, Lord, I just can't take anymore, but then the wind started blowing and they heard the roar, and then God spoke to that tired man who'd been so brave. But he wasn't in the wind, no, he wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake, and he wasn't in the flame. The voice of God came down as a whisper, and Elijah heard the Lord call his name. in the wind, no, he wasn't in the fire, he wasn't in the earthquake, and he wasn't in the flame, the voice of God came down as a whisper, and Elijah heard the Lord call his name. When we're looking for directions, big signs aren't always best, but we forget our eyes are in our heads and our hearts are in our chest. Things we see in our mind's eye are not as they appear. But God speaks to us in a way that's always safe and near. But he wasn't in the wind, no, he wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake, and he wasn't in the flame. The voice of God came down and Elijah heard the Lord call him. can hear the Lord call our
Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more so, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. The angel of the Lord says, Elijah, get up and eat. My name is Elijah, and I am a prophet of the Most High God. And I was invited by Pastor Aaron to share my testimony today. The day that God said to me, Elijah, I see you. I often think about why would God choose a man like me to be one of his prophets? that I discovered that God sees so much more in me and in you than we see 
in ourselves. And so I just want to share a few things with you today about what God taught me about himself. God showed me a side of himself that I didn't know about. And I had just had a mountaintop experience on Mount Carmel. We had killed 450 prophets of Baal. We had proven on that day that God is the one true God of Israel. And I thought that that would be enough. King Ahab went back to his kingdom and told old Jezebel what had happened. And before I knew it, she had sent a messenger to me and said, by this time tomorrow, your life will be like one of them. And I must say, I was gripped with fear. I was already exhausted, I was already tired. I was already running on fumes, and to hear that this wicked woman wanted to take my life. And so I ran from Jezreel, and I found myself here in the wilderness under this broom tree, and I sat there. And the Lord allowed me to rest and to sleep. I sat there, and God knew exactly what I needed. He looked into the inner recesses of my soul and said, Aaron, you need rest. And I'll never forget that day as I laid under this broom tree. I felt like I was alone. I felt exhausted. I felt depleted. And under that broom tree, I asked the Lord that he might take my life. And God let me vent. He let me talk. He let me express myself. But it was right then and there that God ushered me into the ICU, the in intentional care unit of his divine presence. It was right then and there that God assumed the responsibility of being the primary caregiver of my soul. I didn't know how exhausted I was. I did not know how depleted I was. God allowed me to rest. You may be asking a question, what was God's diagnosis of you? What, what was his prescription? I'm glad you asked that question. Because you see, Jezebel had it out for me. And you know, one might say that Jezebel wore the pants in that family. She was the decision maker. She was calling all the shots, and, and Ahab was just a centerpiece. You see, Jezebel was a worshiper of Baal, and the worst thing about her that she had led all of the children of Israel astray, and they began to worship Baal as well, as well. And I, as the prophet of the Most High God, would not allow this to take place. And God gave me a great victory on Mount Carmel. Oh, was a, what a great day it was. God proved to us, proved to the people of Israel that he was the God of all gods. 
But you know, every now and then, when you have a mountaintop experience, you're going to soon have a valley experience as well. And such was my case. I was down in the valley under this broom tree. God showed me what he was going to do. He showed me a a part of himself that I had never seen before. God saw that I needed rest. Now, this this is not any kind of rest. This isn't the kind of rest that, that you get from a trip to Cancun or Hawaii. That's not the kind of rest that God gives us. It's it's not the kind of rest that you get when you you take a vacation, but it's the rest that only God can give. Only God can give you rest that recenters your soul. Only God can give you rest that stabilizes your heart. That only God can give you rest that regulates your mind. God went into the inner sanctum of my soul and gave me a rest that only he could give. And I don't know what's going on in your life today, but maybe you need the rest that only God can give. Maybe you need that rest that recenters your soul and regulates your heart and sustains you in the midnight hour. But that's not all God did. As I was laying there under that broom tree, God said to me, Elijah, get up and eat. And it was right there on those hot stones that I took the jar of water and I drank and I took the bread and I ate the cake bread and I went back down to the broom tree and I rested. But also, God saw that I needed to be replenished. Not only did I need rest, but I needed to be replenished. God showed me that day that I was human. I wasn't divine. Only God is divine. God doesn't get burnt out. He doesn't get stressed. Me and my human frailty, me and my moodiness, me and my temperament, I need it to be replenished. God showed me that day that that man shall live by bread and by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. That man needs physical food and he needs spiritual food. God showed me that day that I needed to be replenished. And maybe you today need, you need replenishment. You need the food that only God can give. God showed me that he was the source of my power, the source of my strength. There was nothing that I could do without God. As I look back over my life, God gave me the power to feed the woman whose child was dying and to raise that child from the dead. God gave me the power when I went into the wilderness and fed me with a raven. Everybody knows that ravens don't feed you. They take from you. God had ordered and appointed ravens to feed me. And now God shows me, showed me in the wilderness of Damascus that he was going to take care of me. He was going to feed me. He was going to get me recentered again so that I could do ministry again. I don't know where you are today, but maybe you need to be 
replenish. You need something that's going to charge your soul, spiritually charge you, give you the energy that only God can give. Only God can give us that kind of spirit, that kind of strength. It was right then and there. God showed me through the bread and through the water, and I was able to go for 40 days and 40 nights off of that water and that bread in the strength of the Lord. And you know, it was so... It was so amazing that God allowed me to go in in that strength, but still there was something about my soul that wasn't right. Even though God had given me rest, even though God had replenished me, still there was a fear that I just couldn't shake. There was an anxiety that I just couldn't get out of my spirit. There was a tension within me that would not release me, and God knew exactly where I was. You see, God can see in you what you can't see in yourself. God can see anxiety before it gets in you. God can see fear before it gets in you. God can see jealousy before it arrives. God can see hatred before it gets into your spirit. He can see the things that bring you fear. And that's why he's such a great caregiver. That's why he, he's, he takes care of my soul and he gives attention to me in the recesses of my life. God knows me better than I know myself. You see, we live in times where there's a lot in our purse, but there's very little in our person. In other words, we may have everything that the world has to offer, but we're depleted in our person. God says, I I, I wanna put something in you that the world can't give and the world can't take away. Some of us are here today and we're gripped with pain. What happened in the past and we just have not been able to let it go. God wants to give us purpose over our pain. Some of us today are gripped so much with anxiety and worry that we can't even worship the God who created us in his image. I'm here to tell you today that God can handle it. God can heal you. God can refresh you. God can restore you. God can replenish you. If you would just let him have his way in your life. But not only did God give me rest, he saw that I needed rest. Not only did God see that I needed to be replenished, but God told me to go to Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, the place where I first met him. He told me to go there because only when you've been to Mount Horeb can you deal and have the victories on Mount Carmel. So I went to Mount Horeb. But I was afraid to go up to the mountain and so I found a cave, and I hid within that cave. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? And I looked around, and I said, Didn't didn't you ask me that question once before, Lord? 
But God was trying to get something out of me. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I, I am one of your prophets. And I serve you, Lord. You are the most high God. I, I, was, I have been zealous for you, Lord. And Israel, the children of Israel, have destroyed your altars. They have killed your prophets. And I alone am left. And they are trying to take my life as well. You know, the Lord, he let me have my pity party. He let me talk. He, he let me vent. And I was sure enough having a pity party. And I began to think that I was the only one left. And God showed me later that there's a lot of believers, thousands who have not bowed down to Baal. As I was in that cave, I, I refused to, to walk out of the cave because I was still gripped with fear. And you know, fear has a way of paralyzing us. Fear sometimes can cause us to be in the wrong place, to be in hiding when we ought to be visible. Fear can keep us from doing the things that God wants us to do. God was trying to get me to come out of the cave. You see, what was really going on, God was trying to redirect me. I was turned toward fear, and God says, no, Elijah, I want you to turn toward faith. I was retreating in, in in the feelings of fear, but God says, I want you to walk by faith, Elijah. Fear had gotten the best of me. And God said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Were you in the wrong place because you're gripped with fear and anxiety and you have been paralyzed by fear, and God is asking you the same question, asking me the same question, what are you doing here? Because God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of courage and of love and a sound mind. So he wants us to move in the spirit of faith. He wants us to move and understand that as long as we are with God, we are the majority. God spoke to me that day, and as I stood there in the cave, the Lord told me to come out of the cave, and he would allow his spirit to pass by. And as the spirit came by, a strong wind blew through the, that place. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after that, an earthquake came through. And a storm. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then the fire came through, but God was not in the fire. And all of a sudden, a still, small voice that I could barely hear, God spoke to me. And I covered myself. And I said to myself, Lord, I am not worthy to be in your presence. And I worship the Lord in that place called Mount Horeb. I worshiped him in the beauty of his holiness. The Lord asked me again, what are you doing here, Elijah? 
And I said to the Lord again, Lord, I am your prophet, and I have been very zealous for you. But Lord, they have destroyed your altars. Children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, and they are trying to take my life as well. And the Lord said, okay, Elijah, that's enough. I've shown you a part of myself that, that only Moses has seen. Get up from here, Elijah. I'm redirecting you. And you see, sometimes God will redirect you because you're focused. We're focused on the wrong thing. We're focused on our circumstances more than we're focused on him. We're focused on what's in our bank account more than we're focused on the one who has made a great deposit in us. We're focused on anxiety and, and our jobs, and God says, I want you to focus on me because I'm bigger than your circumstances. I'm bigger than your job. I'm trying to redirect you. And sometimes God doesn't come in the miraculous. He doesn't show up in the earthquakes. He doesn't show up in the strong winds. He doesn't show up in the fire. Sometimes in our lives, he shows up in the ordinary ways of life. That which seems mundane and mediocre, God whispers in our ear. And says to you and me, I see you. I've got your back. I'm going to look after you. I'm bigger than your enemies. I've got this. God is saying to you, saying to somebody here today, don't you worry. Don't you fret. Be courageous because I see you. It was right here, <laughs> right here at Mount Horeb, God said to me, I see you, Elijah. It was right here that I felt the presence of the Almighty God. And he recentered me. He restored me. He re reaffirmed me as a prophet. And I heard his voice. And when you hear God's voice, you got to block out all the other voices. I, I, I didn't hear Jezebel anymore once I start focusing on God. God said to me, go back to where you came from, Elijah. And when you get there, I want you to anoint Hazael as king of Aram. I want you to anoint Jehu as king over Israel. I, I want you to anoint Elisha as the prophet who will succeed you. One might say that God was calling this old prophet into retirement. Because God knows exactly what we need and when we need it. I felt his presence in this place. I felt his presence. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. Oh, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. He will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal you in this place. Oh, he will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal you in this.
this place. Father, we thank you for being the God who sees me. Thank you, Lord, for being the primary caregiver of our souls. Thank you, Lord, for giving us rest, the rest that only you can give. Thank you, Lord, for replenishing us, that you are the source of our strength. And thank you, Lord, for being the one who re redirects us. And Lord, maybe there's someone here today that needs to know that you are the one who can give them hope and give them a future. So, Lord, I pray that you'll make it crystal clear to somebody here today that they need your son, Jesus. Lord, we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And it wasn't in the wind, no, it wasn't in the fire, it wasn't in the earthquake, and it wasn't in the rain. The voice of God came down as a whisper, and Elijah heard the Lord call his name. When we're looking for direction, big signs aren't always better. Forget our eyes are in our heads and our hearts are in our chest. Things we see in our minds are not as they appear. But God speaks to us in a way that's always safe and can hear the Lord call our name. Amen. Amen. Join with me as we pray for others this morning. Almighty God, who taught us to pray not only for ourselves, but for people everywhere, hear us as we pray for others. Grant that all who trust you obey your word and live together in love. May you uphold those in need and defend oppressed people. Comfort and relieve, O oh Lord, all who are in trouble, all those in sorrow, all who are in poverty, all who are sick, all who are grieving, all who need rest, all who need to be replenished especially those known to us. Today we pray for comfort for Eric, Andrew, Becker, and JJ as they grieve the loss of their mother and wife, Catherine, and also for Isabel Magnuson and family and the passing of Isabel's husband, Andy, for healing and good health for Mike Scott and Jonathan Lutz, for safe travel and mercies for Taylor, our director of middle schoolers, as she travels to camp with 24 children. Lord, may they have an intimate encounter with you. And may we pray today as Jesus prayed by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we'll ask you to stand if you're able. Let's sing and rejoice in the victory that God gives us. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Look away beyond the blue. Sing it loud. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Yeah. 
Thank you, Day Camp Band. Hi again. For those of you who saw me earlier, at the, uh, before the worship started, the message is still the same. So this is really just to update our online um, chat room and everybody who is worshiping with us from other places outside of the sanctuary. First of all, thank you for um, wearing your masks and being willing to take a mask. And if, if it was you who grabbed these white ones, you should know that the maker of these is Haynes. So think about what that is. They're handy. You can tie-dye it if you don't like the white color. Um, but if you could just stay posted on where our, uh, how we're handling COVID here at UPC, we will have updates in the connector, and we will have them on our regathering page. But for now, we are going to ask that everybody wear masks, regardless of if you're vaccinated or you're unvaccinated. If you are unvaccinated, there's a section up in the balcony where there will be enough space to socially distance or you can stick together with your, your COVID pods as we've uh, come to know them. And um, we just ask you to be thoughtful of where everyone is in terms of their comfort in um, getting back together in real life, wherever you may see them. And so just remember that we are all doing all we can to be responsive to what the COVID virus is doing and to love our neighbors and to be pivot ready. So thanks for your flexibility and just working together as we get through this. So with that. So TG and I, we've been trying to figure out how are we going to pull it off that we are both wearing yellow shoes. And so this is my opportunity to point to TG's yellow shoes. See, bright and happy. All right, thank you, Asuka. And so we just want to, first of all, we want to thank Pastor Aaron for that incredible message. <laughs> And the whole dramatization, his wife Michelle and our entire team here that made that possible. You didn't know the voice of God today. That was our very own Chris Nichols, <laughs> who's the voice of God on today. So if you, today, that message moved you and you just want to know more about that Jesus that we talked about today, go and head over to upc.org slash Jesus. There's more information for you there and someone to meet you at your point of need. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can meet someone in the library, someone that can pray for you and talk with you there. Now hear our benediction on today. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you both now and forevermore. Let everyone say amen. Mm -hmm. with 